If you want to learn some secrets on how to make successful tallow candles, stay tuned. This video is for you. Secret number one to making a successful tallow candle is the wick. Secret number two in making a successful tallow candle, planting the wick firmly on the bottom of your container so it doesn't flop over. And secret number three in making a successful tallow candle, you need to have the proper proportions of tallow versus beeswax. Hello everyone, my name is Amberlynn and today I'm going to take you through the process of making tallow candles. The last few months I've been experimenting making tallow candles using the tallow from our grass-fed cow Flora that we recently butchered. We were overwhelmed with a whole bunch of fat from her, very very blessed. And so we rendered it all down and we got around 25 gallons from her. So tallow is the fat of a cow or a goat, I think a sheep as well, lard would be from a pig. Although you can completely use lard in replace of the tallow. One of the ways that we're using the tallow is making candles, as you can see here. If you don't want to make your own tallow candles, you can go to our website, thebeaglefamily.com, and you can order your own. I have both of these styles available. This is a four ounce cup, and then this is a punch cup. So we have those on for a really great deal. If you're looking to have a healthy alternative to soy or paraffin candles, this is awesome. It doesn't contaminate the air, and the wicks are pure cotton. There's no lead in them, so there's no harm to the air that you're breathing. You might be thinking, doesn't it stink? Well, the smell may vary according to the animal and the type of animal, but the only time that our beef tallow smelled is when we were rendering it. Other than that, we don't know it's there. Tallow has been used for centuries for lighting after the sun set. It was less expensive and more commonly available than beeswax, which was generally reserved only for the rich and the churches. I've read in many places people saying that tallow candles smelled terrible, were messy, and did not give good light. But we haven't found that to be the case at all. Our tallow candles give off no odor, and they burn clean for many hours, providing a beautiful bright flame. You can use any tallow to make candles, but the best is the suet. It does not grow on or in the meat, but rather in hard, waxy clumps around the organs of the animal. In the Bible, this is considered the best fat and was set apart by the Israelites for their sacrifices to God. Before using your tallow or suet, it must be rendered down. To do this, simply chop it up, put in a pot, cook over medium heat until all the fat has melted out of the tissues, and then strain it. It really is very easy. Anyway, on to making the candles. The basics of making a candle is you need a wick and you need a fuel. You can just use a cotton cord, very, very simple, or you can buy your own wicks, although you don't want to get wicks that have lead in them. I invested in some good cotton candle wick, and you can get wicks in a whole bunch of different sizes. The wick is very, very important to getting a good candle and a good burn. So you can get wicks that will burn, say, two, two and a half inches or more, or one to two inches, or even smaller for like a, a taper candle. Something that you need to remember with burning tallow is it burns faster than other wax or beeswax because it's softer. So you need a slightly smaller cord. Just take it into consideration or just trim your wick more frequently. Because tallow is so soft, the wick doesn't like to stay upright. So after pondering that situation and praying about it, an idea came to me, it was an answer to my prayer, that if I coat my cord in beeswax, it will stiffen up like that, instead of like that. <laughs> so it stays stiff. So this is what I do, I'll show you. This little pot is designated to only beeswax because beeswax does not like to come off very well. I cut some cotton cord that's all droopy and I'm going to make it so I can actually have it stand upright in my containers. I melt my beeswax and I take the cord and I plunk it in and I let it steep, soak in the wax for about five minutes. After the cord has steeped in the wax, it becomes like this. Very, very stiff, which is perfect. And then what you do is you cut it into lengths to fit the container that you're using. 
And you always want it to come up like half an inch, maybe an inch. You can see I have a whole bunch of different sizes of containers, just lots of fun you can have there. Measure it out. So we have all of our wicks measured out and in our containers, they're all ready to go. This one, because it's so big, I'm gonna put two smaller wicks. I'm going to put these in kind of side by side like that. This is a one to two inch. And then this one is a two and a half plus inch. So the next thing that's really important to understand is the measurements of tallow. Now, because tallow is so soft, I like to make it a little firmer and I use some beeswax. I've used our own beeswax, but I've also used some local beeswax from another beekeeper. So I clean the beeswax and I put it through a mesh and a cheesecloth and strained out all the yuckies and put it into little silicone muffin cups. And then they cooled and I popped them out and they're in perfect measurements for quarter cup. And what I found to work really good is to have quarter cup of beeswax for five cups of tallow. So that's what we're going to do. And then we just melt it all together and pour it into the candle containers. So here are almost three quarts of our beautiful golden grass-fed tallow. I'm gonna take three. I wouldn't have to do completely three. I could cut this in half, but because it's so hard, I'm just gonna leave it. And the whole mixture is just gonna be a little firmer, which is totally fine. So put those in and I'm gonna pour this tallow in. I had it in the 250 oven in our aga, just melting so I can take it out of the jars easier. Now we're going to melt this really slowly on medium heat and then I'll be ready to pour it into our containers. Here's another little trick that works really, really well in keeping the wicks up. You need to center it and it needs to stand up straight. I'll show you what I've been doing and it works amazing because even as the candle burns down, the tallow will melt and if the wick isn't secure, it will topple over. The nice thing about using a cotton cord for your wick is that after you have soaked it in the wax, you can actually undo the bottom. And because the wax is sticky, you can actually stick the bottoms to the jar like that. And it works amazingly well. But because we're using these wicks, they don't really come apart as well. So you just dip it really quick and then quickly center it. Now it's standing up, okay. Beautiful. Something really nice about these cups is that they have a little dip in the bottom so the wax stays down there just beautifully. You can see, look at that. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Do a quick dip in. There. we have all of our candles ready to be poured into. This is one of the big secrets on how to make a successful tallow candle. You need to have a stiff wick and you need to have it solidly planted on the bottom of the container. It's very, very important. And the secret in doing that is beeswax. Your best friend in candle making. Now, lots of people when dealing with beeswax, they will melt it in a double boiler. I haven't personally found that to be needful. You can totally do it if you want, unless it is an open flame. If it's an open flame, then it would be best to do a double boiler. Now it's time to pour our mixture of tallow and wax into our containers. And to also help keep the wick up, we have some of these craft sticks. They just help support it. It's also really helpful to cool your tallow wax mix a little bit before pouring it into the containers so that the wax on the wicks doesn't melt. And the 
rest is pretty straightforward. Simply allow your candles to cool and then trim the wicks. After that, your candles are all ready to be lit. Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Father, we thank you for this. Um, Sabbath evening and we ask your presence at our table and bless this food to our bodies and thank you for keeping us safe and watching the gates of our farm. All the animals and bless this food to our bodies and the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' precious name we give thanks and pray. Amen.